nowadays it's like people come into a bar and they're like, oh, look at that old thing in the corner, you know? But it's a lot more complicated than that. It's not just like a boom, boom, hit the things on the side. It's a little world in there. Do you like the 70s where the ball's a little slower, but the artwork is like super bright? Do you like the 80s where the ball got quicker? I mean, all eras are great. It's the same counterculture appeal as comic book art, skateboarding, the rock and roll. If you think about how you're rocking the game and the ball is rolling, there's something about that wild, rebellious, partying American spirit. It's one of the ways that TV and movie portrayed a bad kid, they were playing the pinball machine. It's like crack. You start playing it and you just can't stop. This weekend is a really big tournament and show, the Chicago Pinball Expo. It's the 30th anniversary of it. Their slip out tournament with $10,000 on the line. There's seminars every day. You have all designers, pinball manufacturers, so it's a pretty big deal this weekend. The pinball industry is almost 100 years old now. We finally have created a trading card set that commemorates the history of pinball. Oh, there I am. Yeah. There I am. There's something much younger looking than the card. Walter, I want, you to, sign, I want to sign with you later on. Sign okay. one of your cards for me. This card. Hey. Two great legends meeting. There you go. Good to see you. My friend. Thank you very much. My pleasure, sir. You have over a thousand events around the world. You have over 28,000 players ranked in the world pinball rankings. And you know, we're back as being iconic figures from a bygone era. New York City completes a roundup of thousands of pinball machines. The police acted on a city magistrate's decision, which classified them as gambling devices. Back in the day, New York had banned pinball because of Mayor LaGuardia. Yeah, it yeah. was this whole concept that pinball was going to ruin the youth of today. It's still lunch money to play pinball. They were gambling on it. Pinball had two things going against it back in the 30s. One was Chicago. You know, Chicago was Al Capone. It's all mob-based. The fact that the, the majority of pin games were coming from Chicago, and many of the people tended to feel that something's wrong. It was seen as a cash business. The other part of it tended to be much more moralistic. If this is being placed in a store where children can go and spend a penny during their lunchtime, we're corrupting them because they're hanging out where they shouldn't be. And the cause for that, this machine is doing something. We have to get rid of that machine. That machine is bad. It remained illegal until 1976 when manufacturers were kind of pressuring the city government to lift the ban on pinball machines. So Roger Sharp was an advertising person, and they were trying to change the laws so they knew he was a good player. So they said, here's a guy who can beat a pinball machine. He can show you, demonstrate that it is a game of skill. He is like the godfather of pinball. My friends made me a funny t-shirt in college, and all it said on it was, my dad saved pinball. In 1976, I was told that I needed to go in as the expert witness. And after I was sworn in, the first question was, who's paying for you to give testimony? Nobody, I'm just, I'm just here. Here's this person who was attacking me, as if I was somebody who had been hired. And he said, and I guess now you're going to be playing pinball for us. We had two games set up on either side of the courtroom. So I got up, I turned, wait a minute. No, 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 not that one, that one. I know that he thought that that game over there, God forbid, was probably rigged. So I was able to have them understand that this is not just randomly placed. And I was making my shots and talking through everything. If I pull this back just totally and perfectly right, it's gonna go right down the center lane. Went up, hit a rubber, came straight down, boom, and that's when the guy on my left in most of the pictures, all right, that's enough, I've seen enough. So yes, I called my shot. 
The city council voted six to zero to pass and signed it into law that pinball would be allowed back into New York City. I testified in Ohio, I testified in West Virginia and Texas, and there were places that wound up suddenly allowing pinball. Although, even today, there's still some places where there's rules and regulations against it. I couldn't play pinball until I was age 18 because the city had an age restriction. Yeah, I went to the city and I said, hey, I want to open a pinball museum. And, and I found out it wasn't legal. Nobody really was looking at it. It was kind of like, uh, here was this thing that was done in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. It's completely forgotten about. I read the law and it all came down to coin drop. Oh, well, if I don't do the coin drop, then I'm not breaking the law. So I took all the coin mechs out, I put them on free play. The city didn't catch up to me for a couple of years. So the economic development lady asked me to speak at this city hall meeting. I hope I'm gonna put in my two cents and get them to change the law. I don't think these days, I think we kind of know that pinballs are pretty safe. Nobody's really been hurt by a pinball machine unless they've helped me move one. Um, <laughs> and we fully support this. We think uh, it's, it's about time. Thanks. Great. Do you have a motion? Do we have a second? Oh my gosh. Second. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, moving right along. They were kind of shocked to see that they were still there. So it's a move forward for everybody. <laughs> you want to see nothing but selfies with Gary. And right. he says, I'm going to play it on an hour. No, no, leave it in the 80s. First time I saw it first, I'm going to do it. With your finger, the bottom of the, um, from the bottom. We've grown up in the industry for so long. We used to go to pinball expos on Sunday. It was like Sunday was family day. Zach and I were like nine and seven, running around the halls and playing anything we could. It was just a normal part of life. Yeah, this is the collection of pinball tournament success over the last 21 years. This is the first trophy I ever won. It was 1993, Papa Fall Flip-Offs in Chicago. There were a total of four participants, two sharps out of four participants, and I beat Zach that day, so that was a good day. My brother Josh, we always, you know, have good battles. So even if we were playing at a barcade, like, I want to win every time we would play. This weekend is a big tournament. It's called the Flip Out Tournament. And our father, his friend from, you know, back in the days here, and pretty big deal this weekend. Every tournament I play, I don't want to say expect to win, but that's the goal. Anything less is a failure. Zach has gotten as close to winning a world championship as anyone, but he has not done it yet. And I have not done it yet. And it is incredibly frustrating. Um, it's finals day at Pinball Expo. There's a lot of top players here. I mean, I don't know how many world champions, but like Bowen Cairns is here, Jorian Engelbrechtson. I mean, everybody that walks by is a top 20 player or something. Everyone learned from each other. If you don't learn to become a great pinball player by yourself, it's impossible. There are so many little skills to learn and things you pick up on by watching other players. We, we have a lot of respect for each other, but at the same time, we have to compete against each other. You know, you, you're friends with everybody, but you still have to have a killer instinct and try to beat them as well. These guys, they're so serious. Most of them, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they're so focused. They're, you know, a little square. There's no messing around here. Nobody comes here just for shits and giggles. They're coming here to win. And I'm just coming, I'm the hoser coming in, chugging beers. All right, I need another beer, I think. I played like garbage, tied for nine. It's all right. It sucks. 
that's not player error so much as it is just, you know, the fact that there's some level of unpredictability when it comes to pinball. So I'll switch to my other stuff and see what he's doing. Pinball is cool in a way that the game, you're trying to control chaos, so being able to try to control the uncontrollable, it's at anxious moments. I swear a lot when I play. Fuck! I hate you! Don't go yet! Fuck! God damn it! I'm not, I'm not a big swear. Fuck! Fuck, I'm so stupid! Un That's my son. So proud. God damn it. Fuck. That's it. That is the sharps both getting knocked out. I've grown to appreciate what my dad has meant to the game. Seeing the marks that he's left, the ability to sort of pass the torch to us to keep things going. Now having two kids of my own and wondering if they're going to enjoy it or not. If, if my kids like it as much as Zach and I do, that would be amazing. So I've started to remind my dad lately how lucky he is that, you know, we, we took to it as well as we did. I truly do wish that the, uh, the boys had been able to see me play in my prime and maybe have an appreciation because I, I just have this, this connection to pinball that is, that is special to me. And, and I don't want to lose that. But having said that, um, you know, Jesus Christ. I like them to still be proud of me.